evening, everyone. This is Alta of Wisdom. Today, I'm presenting you my latest plugin, Frankenverb. Let's get into it. Okay, um, I got a basic, um, I got a basic track setup. Uh, as usual, you don't want to listen to uh, anything uh, out of context. So let's just hear what it does. Simple kick and bass with uh, just a bit of hats, and I think that's it for now. Let's give it a try. That's a pretty simple one, but it's uh, okay to get us uh, on the right groove. So what do I have? Let's uh, first uh, have a look at the um, at the uh, plugin uh, interface. So as you can see, it's pretty straightforward. Um, you have like this here of the menu to get to the uh, various presets that I've already made. Um, you can load and save a preset or copy a preset to a different uh, instance of the plugin. Uh, you can as well uh, say um, zoom in and out depending on your screen, so you can get get it quite quite small if you have minute if you don't have space, but quite big as well if you uh, uh, if you have a small screen and want to have a better look. So let's get back to one hundred percent, and that's it. You have a bypass to for the plugin. And then you have the main interface of it. Um, at any moment, you have the help button here, which will give you a hint on all the parameters. Uh, so um, Frankenverb is as well provided with a, with a user manual, which is uh, going into a bit more into details about all the all the various parameters. And you have as well an advanced uh, configuration menu that you can display using the plus button. So um, most of the plugin is pretty straightforward. And it's quite classical uh, in terms of uh, a reverb. So let's just have a look at uh, the first line. Uh, Pre-processing uh, it's pretty simple. You can uh, have the you, know, you have the input uh, that's going inside of the plugin. So you can uh, pump a bit, a bit the volume up, or just lower it if it's too hot. Too hot. Uh, you can as well filter uh, the um, input signal. Uh, so you have a high pass and low pass. Um, they are um, 12 dBs, so it's not it's not a brick wall um, equalizer or cross crossover. So. Um, but it's pretty convenient as sometimes uh, you don't want to muddy up uh, your whole chain uh, with the reverb. So having the possibility of filtering out uh, things before they get into the, the plugin is pretty, pretty useful. Same for the output signal. You can filter what's go going out of the uh, plugin. Uh, it's only on the reverb signal, so if you have something in the dry signal which is passing through the the, the plugin, it will not be, of course, uh, it will not be processed by the post processing. It's just on the reverb itself, so we can uh, change the volume and filter a, a high pass and low pass. Then you have this uh, two mix buttons. What? Why do we have two mix buttons? Uh, first one is uh, the dry wet, which is global dry wet between the input signal and the reverb signal. And the second one will allow you to mix the two uh, sub uh, engines of the reverb because uh, Frankenverb is uh, composed of two different uh, reverb engines. One, one would be a generic, uh, I would say a regular, uh, reverb and the second one is the pitched reverb that you can use for uh, making shimmer or black hole uh, effects out of your reverb so you can mix them uh, you can mix them all right then um, second line we have all the parameters which uh, which act on the main reverb so uh, first one is of course the size uh, it's um, if you're not familiar with reverbs <laughs> Uh, this is not a convolution reverb, it's a classical one, so it means that we are trying to place the sound inside a given area, in a room, let's say, and um, we are placing the audio source somewhere in the room, and we would be acting as the uh, auditor uh, that is listening to uh, the signal uh, after the signal has been reverberated by the, by the walls of the room. So this is, uh, in simple words, it's a set of delays because you will hear echoes coming through your ear. But as they will bounce, they will be bouncing 
on all of the worlds um, several times, then uh, they will become more and more indistinct. And uh, this is what we call a reverb. So we can decide here if we want to have uh, all signal reverberating is uh, something as small as this small uh, can or in a huge area like a galaxy when it's symbolized here as a galaxy for a very huge area, uh, say a church, a cathedral, things like that, or even wider elements. So what you will get here is something which is very metallic because it's really something, uh, uh, most of the delays will have the same value, so, so they will sound metallic. And uh, on the opposite, uh, having your sound reverberating in something as big uh, as, a, as a cathedral will uh, give you more um, indistinct reverberations, and especially depending on the frequencies. The glide a parameter that you see here allows you to uh, control how fast the room size will change when you touch this knob. So if I say I'm zero and then I'm going to 107 and 27 maximum, if I have the glide at 100%, then it's going to take uh, probably like 10 to 15 seconds to reach the new value. Uh, instead, if I just go to zero, um, I will just achieve something which is almost instant. And uh, we'll see later that it allows you to, to do some creative stuff. So. Um, anywhere on the interface, uh, double clicking will allow you to open uh, a pop-up and type whatever address, whatever value you want. Right clicking will just get back to the default value. And if you shift uh, and then you scroll up and down, or it probably depends on the on the uh, OS you're in, uh, you, it allows you for finer increments of the values. So we can you can do things a bit a bit uh, easier, a bit finer. time so just click click right, right click oh, sorry right click and then you get back to the to the default values okay uh, if you click on a knob and press press plus minus then you, you can just increase or decrease same for left and right and up and down they will they will just behave the same so if you're uh, more happy uh, using your keyboard then you can as well use it uh, the second parameter on this line is the time value. Again, uh, it's not um, it's not defined as milliseconds or seconds or whatever, um, because uh, it's really uh, the time of the reverberation will really depend on the size on uh, all other parameters like the damping, the pre smooth, and if you on top of that use the shimmer, then you have another uh, reverberating engine, so you pretty much can't control exactly how long the the, the time will last so if you really need to have your reverb stopping at a point then it's probably better to just bounce the signal or freeze the track with the reverb and then cut out and fade out the reverb as seen fit um, so zero is uh, as short as possible and 107 uh, 27 is almost infinite reverb right click to get back to default value next parameter is the pre-delay um, I've Personally, like to have a pre-delay on the reverbs that I used, that I use, and uh, I wanted to put uh, as many uh, options as I could inside uh, my own uh, reverb. So you can define the pre-delay both in milliseconds or bit synced, which is even better. So you can have your delay, your reverb starting uh, half bar, half a bar after the uh, the input signal, which is to me pretty convenient. Then uh, comes two parameters that are not always as um, easy to understand uh, as the rest, is the early and late parameters. Um, uh, they mean uh, respectively early reflections and late reflections. Uh, early reflections, um, when the sound starts, if you, for example, just have a snap at the, um, uh, in front of you in the, in, the, uh, in the room in which it's reverberating, then the first thing that you're gonna hear of this sound, apart from the dry signal, which is going straight to you, is the first uh, bounced uh, signal uh, through the wall. So it's, it's usually something which, will, which is gonna be al almost as clear as the original signal, but bouncing. So depending on the numbers of walls and of the, all that kind of stuff, you will hear one or several uh, echoes, but they will probably be quite distinct. On the opposite, on the late reflections will be the rest, um, when these first reflections 
a continuum and some of them will come to your ears but the rest of them will keep on bouncing uh, over and over on the walls again and again and some of these reflection, reflections will come back to your ears but not all of them and so they will become more and more indistinct and will and they also will fade out more and more on top of that um, this is the late reflections and on top of that we have then these two parameters the first one is uh, usually a bit uh, complex as well it's called the damping which is uh, which has nothing to do with moisture with a dry wet uh, elements it's just uh, it means uh, it it's a parameter that controls how much uh, the walls uh, are reflecting uh, the signal and how much the walls are uh, absorbing that signal um, typical walls will usually have a different um, a proportion of the signal coming to them uh, that will be absorbed depending on the frequency so if i have a damping set to zero then my wall will be uh, behaving as a perfect mirror so anything that goes to that wall will be bouncing 100 uh, percent uh, all frequencies in the full spectrum you know, as if i increase that damp then we're going to see that uh, the low but more frequent the high frequencies will be more and more absorbed by the material corresponding to the wall so if i have the damping at maximum then all my high frequencies and most of my lows will be absorbed by the wall so uh, in the end what i will get is just the mid signal that will in turn be absorbed as well and so my echo my reverberation will be will be uh, generally shorter the pre smooth uh, is a parameter that you probably don't have in most reverbs uh, i found it interesting uh, it's some kind of low pass uh, as it's gonna um, merge it's gonna average uh, part of the incoming signal and uh, causing what we would call a very simple low pass I mean two consecutive samples will be will be averaged and uh, more and more of them uh, if the pre smooth is higher so and if it will basically eat the transients of your incoming material so if you want to have something very smooth uh, this parameter and that's the hence the name this parameter will we have some importance uh, this is for the main reverb so it's pretty straightforward let's get back to uh, default values and then we have the shimmer and black hole reverb um, in simple word uh, anything that goes out of the main reverb will get in the shimmer and will be pitched up or down accordingly to, according to this first three lines first three knobs and uh, on top of that uh, the precision of this pitching will be uh, controlled by the tune and the modulation values so it's pretty complex to explain so i think that will switch faster to the demo to hear for ourselves what it does but uh, all in all this controls the pitch of the shimmer this control how how uh, accurate the voices of the shimmer are and uh, here we control with these two parameters the size of each pitch grain so before pitching up or down any signal what we do is we take short snippets of the audio material and we pitch that snippet that snippet up or down and uh, and then we collate all these snippets and it gives us the pitch the signal it's one of the way to pitch uh, audio material and the modulation uh, will tell us how accurate would each of these grain be so if i'm at zero then all my grains will be exactly 80 milliseconds um, and pitched up one octave but if my mod is 100 percent then some of my grains will be 80 milliseconds but most of them will be uh, something else so probably 40 milliseconds or 120 milliseconds but they will be they will be pitched up uh, as if they were uh, 80 milliseconds so they will just uh, be detuned as well but as they are very small snippets in, cont uh, in contrary to the detune then uh, they will be some kind of blurred uh, together because uh, having uh, 80 milliseconds as a grain size means that you hear um, uh, 12 uh, 12 of, or 13 grains per second so even if not if all these grains are not perfectly in tune uh, you just listen to the you just hear the global um, output of these grains and uh, on top of that it's a bit more complex 
each of the grain is itself composed of four subgrains. So uh, when I say 80 milliseconds, then I mean 20, 20, 20, 20. So four uh, subgrains uh, of 20 milliseconds. So very small, very, very small snippets. Uh, I don't want to get too much into the technical details. So because it's, uh, it's going to get you bored, guys. So let's finish with this feedback mod. As the name says it, it takes the output of the shimmer and get it, gets it back here in the main, to the main reverb. So it's not getting here to the shimmer itself, but back to the reverb. So this signal will be reverberated again through the main, uh, to the main engine and then we'll get back to the shimmer. So um, beware, this one can get you quite high and quite hot. So uh, that's hence the value, which is a really uh, small, you can go up to 100% if you want to, but usually if you do that, uh, we're gonna see that the compressor, which is inside the reverb, will just eat your signal to avoid uh, blowing your, your ears. So let's get back to zero. And we just switch uh, quickly to the advanced parameters. Um, so here we have two advanced parameters. The first one controls the number of uh, shimmer voices. Beware, this one can be really hot on the CPU. So by default it's two voices. In most of the case, it's gonna be enough. Uh, in case you want to have something really denser for some reasons, or if you have, if you're using the detune and you want to have many voices which are spread along the detuning parameter, then you can go up, for, up to that. But usually I would strongly advise you not to go too high unless you have a, a really strong a computer. The second one is the stereo wideness parameter. So um, some of the um, comments, some of the drawbacks of mo many reverbs in the market is that by default they are mono uh, because by design most reverberations are occurring in mono. But still, uh, people want sometimes to have wide, uh, wide reverbs. So even if my sound is coming as a mono signal, I want to have my reverb flourishing around me and uh, I've added these parameters so that you can have some uh, wider signal. Uh, if you put that to ultra wide, so maximum value, then you may have even some phasing issues because your signal will be so wide that you can have some cancellations. And so your signal, some of your signal might be negatively correlated. So beware, usually having a medium is probably okay. And then finally, you see two compressors. Uh, very simple. Um, uh, so you have a reverb compressor, which is compressing the reverb uh, on its own signal. So uh, if you play with the room size, with all these parameters, then you can have very wide variations of the signal amplitude. So it allows you to control this one. By default, it's set to some quite fast values um, and a quite low threshold. So it's gonna, it's gonna uh, crush uh, your reverb to make sure it's is quite okay in terms of uh, um, up amplitude, and you have as well something which I usually like to have in a reverb is a ducking re uh, compressor, uh, which means that uh, this ducking compressor will uh, turn the reverb signal down when there is input on the on the track. So if I, for example, have a voice uh, which is uh, with a singer with a, which is playing or lead synth. Uh, I want to be able to listen to my th to my sense as clear as possible uh, without the reverb mudding up all the stuff. But if my synth has finished played, so after the initial uh, note, then I want to let my reverb come, come back and this ducker will allow you to do that based on the level of the incoming signal. So enough of me talking. Um, Let's switch to the actual demo. Um, what do I have here? So I have several tracks. Uh, we may add some um, uh, in the end. So this one is a uh, sound from Bessel. I'll just, just turn on, turn off all these, all these out of wisdoms uh, device I've put uh, all over the place. And just here, what it does with just the raw sound. So it's a very simple patch from Brazil. Um, it's not a patch of mine, so uh, I wouldn't pretend I'm so such an expert in using Brazil. Uh, if you, for those who don't know Brazil, it's a, it's an awesome synth from Yuhi. 
uh, which is an FM synth. So it's really for FM FMing st stuff. But here we're gonna listen to something which is more likely a pad. Let's just hear it in solo. Very nice. So let's add the uh, reverb. So it's just not, it's not set up uh, that much. So I'm gonna do it live. we have uh, almost half normal reverb and half shimmer so if I just listen to the reverb itself so yeah. we have a nice yeah we have a nice reverb uh, but it's pitched exactly uh, at the same pitch uh, of my incoming signal so that we can't really hear the reverb it's uh, happening on top of the pad if I just listen to the shimmer, let's just uh, remove the input and just t keep the shimmer. So as you can hear, the uh, so we are pitching up one octave so just 12 semitones up and the modulation is at its maximum so we have something which is really blurred so it's giving us uh, the most level of density the most amount of density on our reverb if i just re get this modulation param to so to a, a lower value then we're gonna hear the difference So now all of our grains are perfectly in sync. And so we have something which is resonating like a metallic, uh, metallic engine. We can play with the, with the pitch. Let's augment the glide and get back to one octave up, right click. Nice riser, but when as soon as I reach my destination pitch, I'm back to something which is probably too much resonating. So if it's a creative uh, effect that I want, then it's okay. But most of the time, I'm gonna back to a regular value of modulation to have something which is nice, not too dense. And if I get back to the initial value of 100%, then I'm gonna get back to something more indistinct. So let's mix in the, re the regular reverb. and a bit of the input signal. So you see here the gain reduction, the gain reduction telling us that we are compressing our reverb a bit. So if we go here, we are compressing quite high, so we can just Lower a bit the ratio, so we get like seven, eight dBs of compression at the maximum, which is a uh, quite natural sounding. And if I want to hear my incoming signal, I'm gonna ask for ratio here, for threshold here, and I'm gonna compress a bit my incoming signal 
with, with my pad. So I'm here more of my incoming signal. Not that interesting here because we don't use, this is not a trenger, trenchant, uh pool material, so it's not a plug or something like that, so it's not really useful. And in context, let's add some auto gate. So here the auto gate is um, set up as uh, a bit of dry wet, so it's not gating all the signal, but just 30, uh, 30 you know, almost 40% of it. Um, Mostly with 100, 1, 1 8, 1, uh, 1, 8, 1 16, and a bit of 1 30 second. Let's see what it does. And the second one here is the envelope. Uh, which is configured as a, as a side chain. Um, so we have a bit of reduction, beginning of first, uh, first uh, quarter, that's first half, first eight, second eight, that's the second quarter. And uh, this is the second part of the second quarter. So we have something which is re-pumping above, uh, above two, two, uh, two beats. So we clearly hear that uh, that's bad, but it's not in the way. Uh, it's not in the way of the kick and bass. I could filter a bit the reverb to really have it out of the of the kick and the bass. So 250 was probably okay. Uh, this should be tuned, of course. So this is an example of sound that we can achieve. Uh, second one is um, using, so again, some two envelopers here. So it's, a, it's a sound from Kniff Audio. So it's a plugin alliance, uh, vintage sounding analog, analog uh, synth. Let's hear what it uh, on its own. So there's a digital delay inside this one. So it's gonna have a brass. Um, let's add Frank and Verb. There we go. So here, what do we have? Uh, a bit of low pass here, I think it's default. Uh, again, Usually it's nice to have more shimmer than reverb because the shimmer tends to be um, higher in pitch, so lower perceived in terms of its amplitude. Uh, mixed three, three quarters of the input signal. A uh, very small size, so it's usually uh, give us, it usually gives us something which is quite clear, uh, but almost resonating. And uh, again, we have one octave up, so it's a shimmer with a bit of feedback. Let's see what it does. I had to rush a bit to release this uh, plugin uh, right before Halloween. It was not meant initially to be released at a speci specific date, but as the name came from some discussions uh, in Discord, uh, then uh, came out to Frankenverb and uh, Frankenverb, Frankenstein, all that stuff. I mean, uh, I thought it would be funny to release that in, uh, <laughs> in, this, in this period. So that's, uh, that's the reason why. So, um, so let's hear what it does uh, with Franken Verb activated. So you hear the feedback is making really good feedback.
to a huge place or a very small one. And here, very metallic sound. So we can get quite in the middle, 48, like that. So we get some funny effects. When the size is increasing, it's funnier than when it's decreasing. It's very nice, like so. Probably a bit too high in volume. But again, let's get this one in context. No, no frequency shifting, it's just a regular R1 dotted ping pong delay. Uh, with a bit of feedback, something. It's another of my devices, but this one is uh, just used as a delay here. Uh, you could as well use sample delay, which is um, one of my free devices, but uh, this one, a sample delay, doesn't have ping pong mode yet. Uh, but that's something that I have to do once I can uh, free my hand for more than a second <laughs> of all the stuff I have to do. Okay, and finally, uh, this one uh, is uh, double take as both or triple take. Sorry, because uh, what we hear, what we have here is uh, let's just turn all this stuff uh, down. And so we have here is the, it's an it's an upcoming uh, Max for Life device uh, that have uh, almost finished, and it's emulated the grain uh, mode of the TI2 the virus. So. Uh, the infamous virus that uh, some of you guys probably have, uh, most of you don't, and uh, which uh, suffer from two main uh, drawbacks. Uh, the first one is that you can't use its uh, uh, total integration stuff inside uh, uh, OS X uh, after Mojave. So Mojave is the, is the latest uh, version of macOS that can handle this TI uh, software. And uh, and of course you can't do uh, you can't do um, offline uh, rendering on it because of the, it's a, it's a physical synth, and uh, as well you just have one instance running if even though you can use uh, multiple uh, layers. Uh, so um, I've been asked by one of my uh, followers to uh, work on something that would emulate at least this granular mod of the virus, which is uh, a bit uh, difficult to emulate. So I spent quite some time on doing it, so just uh, shortly, uh, because it's not the purpose of this tutorial. So you have here a wavetable a folder that you can select. So here are the, all the TI2 wavetables, so all the wavetables that are actually bundled with, that, with the VI2. Let's take the Sundial 3, which is one of the most famous. Um, this one will play, but it will be uh, both the tune, because we have two voices that will uh, play alternately so they will just speak to each other but very fast so mostly most likely one cycle of each and they will be modulated by uh, an am modulator so amplitude modulation so their volume will be uh, will be um, compressed inside a third wave which in this case is the a tri triangle which is the most uh, close uh, to the original virus sound so let's just hear what it does um, without any modulation. Uh, okay, I'm good, yeah. This is the end sound, and I have the pulse width, which controls the level of uh, frequency shifting of this granular. And there's some delay after, after this one. So I can add the carrier if I want to listen to the triangle as well. We have something a bit denser. And 
and I can change as well the uh, in which well, let's we can just add an, oscill an oscilloscope and just here see it for yourself because this one is less precise so we have the the wave file happening so we clearly see that we have two we clearly see that we have two uh, different uh, pitched so it's the same wave but this one is higher and this one is uh, lower so there's one octave of difference I can play with, the, with this one okay very simple and uh, this one is passing through uh, automodulate which is the upcoming uh, version 2.0 of it uh, I've reworked all the uh, visual interface and I've added a full uh, oscillate, um, oscillator genera generator to modulate uh, any parameter so in here we are modulating the pulse width of the uh, of the grain, grain table so we have a triangle which is gonna modulate uh, the pulse width and we have as well some uh, value of, uh, of amount of modulation here which is random step sequencer as you have in autoplay Finally, that's okay. Eight. Okay, so let's pass this one through Frankel, Frankel verb. So I want the whole uh, reverb, but I think I'm gonna put the reverb before the gating because if I don't, we will probably not hear the gating anymore. So we just have the reverb here. I'm just playing with it. We could probably modulate this as well. It's not really the purpose of it, of this uh, tutorial, but okay, let's just and activate the auto gate and some sample delay to have something wider. So we just a few samples uh, for the right signal. So it's just to get you in the ballpark, of course. Uh, you have to find. Uh, your own personal use on the reverb and on the, all the effects. So let's see what it does in context. Uh, I'm gonna add the resonator. I'm in 
F. Quite weird. Pretty, probably useful uh, to make an Atmos. But in that case, just remove the auto gate. And get rid of the high, high frequencies, just skip something. have some detune and play with more voices and a bit of feedback I'm just watching this gain reduction so if it starts to blow out then it means that I'm adding too more too much, too much feedback here is quite okay. Okay, good. Oops, sorry. There we go. This so this is the end of this tutorial. Um, not uh, doing any sound design. I think my uh, all my mates uh, from the uh, Sidetrans community will probably uh, grab uh, a copy of this one and will probably make their own uh, tutorials and walk through and uh, will probably show how they will use it. And I bet they are better than I than I am to uh, to use and to find the creative usage of these uh, tools that I make. So just um, thank you for uh, watching this tutorial. Um, uh, again, I'm really happy uh, to uh, work on all this stuff uh, for the uh, community. And uh, it's just usually sometimes I struggle a bit. I mean, this one was quite a challenge uh, in terms of development and digital signal processing, but it's a rewarding one to, uh, for me. Uh, to achieve something like that so thank you again um, enjoy uh, be creative and uh, thank you for your attention bye